The day after the third feast, Beowulf expresses the Yates' desire to return home. Hrothgar praises Beowulf for his strength as well as his maturity of mind and verbal prowess. He acknowledges that Beowulf's service to the Danes has drawn the two nations together into shared peace and a pact of friendship, in spite of hatreds we have harbored in the past, Hrothgar says. Beowulf's willingness to risk his life to serve a people not his own has woven lasting peace between these two tribes, a type of peace that most peace weavers have difficulty attaining. Hrothgar again lavishes Beowulf with rewards and gifts. He weeps when he says goodbye, because in his wisdom he knows never more would they meet each other face to face. Hrothgar senses that his death is coming soon. This sorrow is part of the theme or thread of inevitable loss that pervades the entire poem, especially in the second half, and, and overwhelmingly so in the, in the last third. Beowulf also gives a gift to the Danish watchman, who first admonished him to make sure his words and deeds matched, his first subtle warning against pride and empty boasting. Having heeded this good advice, the warrior thanks his teacher before departing for his homeland. When he returns to Jaitland, Beowulf gives all of Hrothgar's gifts to his own king, Hyalak, as any good thane would. Beowulf has done many deeds worth boasting about, but he doesn't use his own renown to increase his reputation, but to increase the reputation of his king. This is evidence that Beowulf has indeed heeded the warnings of Hrothgar and of the evil characters in the Shope's songs. Before we hear Hyalak speak, the poet mentions Higid, Hyalak's queen and an excellent peace weaver. The poet also contrasts Higid with Modthrith, a beautiful and cruel woman who would arrest, torture, and execute any thane who made bold to look her in the face, the poet says in line 1933. Though marriage to Ofa transforms Modthrith into a graceful queen, the poet gives his own evaluation of her character. Even a queen outstanding in beauty must not overstep like that. A queen should weave peace, not punish the innocent with loss of life for imagined results. Lines 1940-43. Modthrith's behavior is monstrous because she refuses to submit, submit to her role as peace weaver. Instead of serving others in her role, she uses her position to serve her own pride. Grendel's mother is almost tame compared to Modthrith. Why does the poet mention Higgad and Modthrith here? It seems odd to place this story between Beowulf's return and his retelling of his adventures. But it isn't an arbitrary addition, though. Remember, there are no digressions in this poem. Each story is carefully selected by the poet to enhance the overall tapestry of word weaving. The story of Modthrith and of Higid affect the story in two ways. First, the poet mentions these two queens to emphasize the strength of Hyalak's kingdom. He has Beowulf as his loyal, faithful thane, and Higid as his young, thoughtful, gracious queen. And Hyalak himself is young, generous, and capable in battle. The poet says that he is Ongentheal's killer and his people's protector. All three of these characters are dedicated to fulfilling their social roles so the future is very bright for the Yates. With Beowulf to defend the community from outside threats, Higid to weave peace internally, and Hyalak to rule generously over all, the Yates are as secure as they can be. Second, coming immediately after Beowulf's second victory, Higid and Modthrith underscore the monstrosity of Grendel's mother and the monstrosity of the evil peace weaver. This strengthens the theme of the reality of the monster within every person a theme that becomes more important in the final section of the poem when Beowulf is in Yatland. Recalling this theme reminds us that the greatest threat to the Yates is their failure to guard their hearts against pride and ambition. It would be very easy for them to trust in their success and security as a nation and to neglect their need to continue to fight the monster within. Beowulf hints at this hidden danger when he recounts his adventures for Hyalak. He mentions, in passing, Hrothgar's daughter, Freyawaru, who is engaged to Ingeld, king of the Hethobards. This marriage would weave peace between the Danes and the Hethobards, and so heal an old feud. But Beowulf predicts that the peace weaving will fail, because the bloodthirst for revenge will be stronger than the, than the desire for peace. The lust for selfish vindication will trump sacrificial service. 
Then on both sides, Beowulf says, the oath-bound lords will break the peace. A passionate hate will build up in Ingeld, and love for his bride will falter in him as the feud rankles. Cain, Grendel, and Unferth are fratricides, killers of kin. They, they warn the Yates and Danes about the self-destruction that come from breaking the familial bonds forged by the peace weaver. Blood vengeance is as monstrous, destructive, and accursed as Grendel himself. Though Freyawaru is a gracious and capable queen, trained by Weelthiau herself, she ultimately will fail to defeat the monster of feud vengeance that threatens both kingdoms. Beowulf has little evidence that his prediction will come true, but experience, history, and countless shope songs affirm its likelihood. All of this should begin to feel to us readers like foreshadowing. We begin to suspect that similar tragedies are coming to the Yates. As strong as Beowulf's hand is against actual monsters, will he have enough strength to slay monsters that spring from the heart and soul? 